We're shooting uh, a documentary. I would definitely be interested. I would definitely watch it because it sounds interesting. Everyone had a really interesting background story. When it's a completely feral existence, uh, you know, those are the times for the, for the best stories. It's about watching people overcome conflict. That's what makes a story interesting. In this journey race, it's got conflict. The store owner thought I was a homeless person. I didn't really oversleep, I just, I just said it. <laughs> I was kind of done. I started hallucinating really badly. And there's twice that I had to run out in traffic and stop a truck or a car. And someone ratted me out to the police. They called the police station on me. And I was like, I can't go on. This type of situation is really going to display folks' ingenuity and desperation in its best form. It's a race in essence, but it's a little bit more of an adventure as well. And that's what I like about it. It's not about running. It's about the individuals and what they go through as they try to go 333 miles across five states. You are truly out there having to take care of yourself with nobody else. You're starting here, you're ending there, and you have to go through all these particular spots in between. And whatever you need, you have to figure that out yourself. It's like one big equation that you gotta figure out as you go. You can't whinge and moan and, and expect all this help out there. It's just bye-bye. There's interesting stories and there's drama. And... If you win the first year, then you have the course record. <laughs> Absolutely, I'd like to win. So, are you are you going to win? Actually, I shouldn't have said that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you did. You said. Put me foot in it. Yeah. And if someone's ahead of me, I'm going after them. And you have ten days to do it. It's the length of time that is difficult for people to overcome. And then you finish that 12 hour period and, and you just don't get any rest. You just you know pick it up and do it again. It's the hottest time of the year, it's in June. All my clothes and my shorts and socks are gonna be sodden most of the time. Sometimes you get burned, you know, cause you get caught out there and you have to eat out of garbage cans. But you know, <laughs> some, sometimes it works out okay. You might be sleeping on church porches. You might be sleeping under bridges. But it was so difficult, like the humidity out there and the bugs and the angry dogs chasing you across the road and the trucks flying past your elbow. Oh man. Knowing how to balance, you know, when to stop, when to go to sleep. We got a little ways to go unless we're gonna sleep right here. How much to go to sleep, how much food you can get away with not having to carry. It will truly be a test. And when I found out that people could actually do this, I'm like, damn, I, I think I could have a go at that myself you've done something that almost no one else will ever be able to do. All sorts of people, brain surgeons or scientists and you know, laborers and whatever. That's the most interesting part is that there's ordinary people who aren't superb athletes that enter into this thing saying, that sounds really hard. I don't think I can do it. Let's go try. You've got guys that are in their 70s doing this, uh, last 80s. 80s doing this. You've got some that are gonna do that and in less than five days, and you've got some that will take all 10 days, you've got some that will get halfway there and, and quit. And we hope to kind of show you the experiences of all of those types of people. The task or the challenge of that is gigantic. How do you capture the story across a span of road that's 333 miles across uh, different states and capture different people in different parts and get the best moments of their conflict along the way. While you are also doing the race. Oh, while I'm also doing the race, right. So a very challenging task. I've put it on paper, I know what I need. I don't know how I'm gonna get it.